Hello and welcome to Part 7 on a video series from the Blender Game Engine. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to create a character that can respawn after it dies. Let's go ahead and jump in. I'll click on the splash screen to get rid of it. And the first thing I do, of course, is switch over to the Blender Game Render Engine. And I'll divide this big 3D viewport into uh, two by grabbing this little cross hatched area. And I'll change this bottom window into a logic editor window. I'll press N to hide my properties panel and I'll zoom out on my uh, screen using the scroll wheel on my mouse and we are good to go. The first thing I want to do is make a simple character and a bad guy because the point here is that if my character, which is going to be controlled by the keyboard, hits a bad guy, I want it to respawn in its default location on the screen. So I'm going to grab this default cube, it's going to be my uh, main character, I'm going to move it over here and I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a new mesh plane to be my ground. I'll press S and 30 to scale it up and I'll press Enter, so S30 Enter. And so now I have a character, I've got a ground. Let's go ahead and add a bad guy. I'll press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm going to add a mesh, a monkey, our evil monkey. I'll press 1 and 3 and 5 to go to my, or rather 3 and 5 to go to my right orthographic view. Of course, you can use your view and any of these. And to switch into orthographic, you can use your numpad 5 or this option here. Let's go ahead and put the monkey up on the ground and I'll move it down here. I'm gonna, gonna give the monkey a red material. So I'll go to the materials tab with the monkey selected and I'll click new and I'll give it a diffuse color. That means just a normal color of red. I'm gonna call this um, red bad and I'll press enter. So let's go ahead and set up the character. I'm going to uh, select my character and I'm gonna add some sensors to it. I'm gonna add a keyboard sensor so uh, add sensor and keyboard. It's gonna be um, using my right arrow key or maybe the forward arrow key or up arrow key rather. So I'll press on the key button, uh, press up arrow and I'll add an actuator. It's gonna be a motion actuator. We're gonna use character motion instead of simple motion here. So I'll change that to character. And I'm gonna connect uh, this logic brick over to uh, the motion one. And we want to move on its local Y axis. So uh, making sure that this L is dark like that. The location is going to be changing by, and I think I'll use two. The last thing I need to do to, to make this work is I need to make sure that this character has a physics type of character. So with it selected, I'll go over to my physics tab in the properties window and I'll change the physics type to uh, character. We've also used rigid body and dynamic, but character tends to be the best one when you are making a character that you're controlling. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to press P on my keyboard and then press the up arrow and <laughs> it, uh, it went pretty quick. So I'm going to change that uh, by quite a lot. Maybe I'll change the value on the Y axis to maybe 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Yeah, that works a lot better. So let's go ahead and set up the collision. My bad guy has a material called red bat. So on my uh, character, I'm gonna just gonna collapse these logic bricks. I'm not gonna be naming these um, in this video because we're not doing too many um, logic bricks here. I'm gonna add a new collision sensor. We're gonna test to see if my character is hitting the bad guy. If my character is hitting the bad guy, it's going to die. So I'm gonna add a new collision sensor and the thing we're going to be testing for, what is it going to be hitting? Well, it's going to be hitting anything with that bad red or red bad material on it. So I'm going to click this MP that stands for material or property. Right now, by default, it uses a property, which we're not using right now. So I'll click on MP and now I can specify what material we're checking to see if we're colliding with. So I'll click right here and I'll choose red bad. So if my character collides with red bad, what's going to happen? What actuator is going to be fired? Well, we're gonna end this object. We want it to just no longer be there at all. So I'm gonna add an actuator called Edit Mesh, and or Edit Object rather, it's right there. So I'll select Edit Object, and I'm gonna connect these two. Now Edit Object has lots of options. We can add a new object to the scene, and that's what we'll actually be doing to respawn the character. But when we collide with the bad guy, we just want to end object. So I'll click on End or this add object pull up and I'll say end object. So when our character collides with the red monkey head, it should just disappear. Let's go ahead and try that out. I'll press P on my keyboard and I'll move towards my monkey and there, it disappeared, it died. Okay, so that's how you make a character go away if 
it touches the wrong thing or it gets killed. But how do you make it respawn? Well, to do that, we have to actually move our character to a different layer in our scene. What does that look like? Well, down here on the header of the 3D viewport, when you're in object mode, if you're in edit mode, um, editing your mesh, you won't see those uh, layer buttons, but when you're in object mode, you will. We have to put the object that we want to respawn on a different layer. So what I'll actually do here is I'm going to give this character a name. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to give it a new object name. And right now it's called cube. So I'm going to call it uh, Bob. Bob is a nice name. I'm going to duplicate Bob. So I'm going to select it and press Shift D on my keyboard. Shift D is of course duplicate. And I'm going to move it straight down. So I'll press Z on my keyboard. I'm just going to move it below the ground and I'll orbit so I can see that. So now I've got a second copy. I'm going to give it a better name. So I'm going to call it Bob uh, New. There we go. And I'm going to move it to a different layer in my scene that will be hidden by default. It won't actually show up and it won't actually, because it's on a hidden layer, it won't actually interact or have any physics until it's in a new shown layer once it's respawned. So with this new cube selected or new Bob selected, I'll press M on my keyboard. That brings up the move to layer. It's M as in move. And I'm going to move it to this lower layer. You can move it to any other layer that is not visible. So M. I'll click on that layer, it's gone, but it's actually just down here. Again, any layers that have objects on them have a little dot, and you can switch between them um, just as easily as clicking. Let's go ahead and make a respawn object. So the way this works is when you want a new spawn of your character, you need to shout out to the world, hey, give me a new spawn. So what I'm going to do actually is on my first character, I'm going to make it send out a message. And this is a very important part of the Blender game engine, the ability for an object to send a message and the ability for other objects to receive messages and do things when they receive messages from other objects or any other object that's shouting at it. So we have here with my main character selected, I have a collision sensor and when it collides with red bad material, it ends the object. But once it does that, I also want it to shout out a message that says spawn. So I'm going to actually add two results to this collision. I'm going to add a second actuator um, called message and there it is right there. So I'll click it and I'm going to have it shout a message when this collision becomes true. So from this and I'm going to connect it to two things. It's going to end this version of the object, but before it does, it's also going to shout a message. What message is it going to shout? Well, I'm going to give it a subject of spawn. So S-P-A-W-N, and I'll press enter. So uh, as soon as this object dies, it's shouting the word spawn. It's not shouting it to any specific object. We could, but we don't actually don't have that object yet. So we'll just leave it to or blank, and that means to everything in your whole scene, uh, which is fine in this case. So what object is going to actually receive the word spawn? We haven't actually created that object yet. We need to create a special spawn object that's going to do the job of creating a new instance of the lower version of our character, Bob. So I'm going to go back to my first layer. I'm going to add a new spawn object. So with my 3D cursor in the middle of the scene, I'll press Shift C on my keyboard. Um, I'm going to press Shift A, and I'm going to add a new empty object. If you're not familiar with what an empty is, an empty is basically just arrows in 3D space. It doesn't have any volume, it's not going to collide with anything, but I'm going to choose um, plain, axi or plain axes, rather. and what that looks like is just a little plus on your screen. It looks like that, and that object is great because it doesn't actually have any physics. It can't be bumping into anything else. It's sort of just there, and it won't actually show up once we press P on our keyboard to play. So it's basically a little ghost object. Okay, let's go ahead and give this object some programming. I'm going to move it above the ground and sort of where I want the new object or the respawn character to respawn. And I'm going to have it respond to a message that it receives when this guy over here, when he dies. And that is the word spawn. So with my empty selected, I'm going to add a new message receive sensor. It's a new message sensor. And the message it's going to be sensing for, listening for, is going to have a subject of spawn. Now, you might be asking yourself, hey, when this guy, when Bob um, shouts out a message, 
there is a message subject, but there's a body here as well that I haven't done anything with. And that's true. We actually don't use the body here. It's only the subject that is what we're doing right now. So don't worry about body text. You actually don't want anything in there. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to our empty where we've received a message called spawn. But what do we do if we get a new spawn? Well, we're gonna create a new instance of that underground new Bob. So I'm gonna add a new actuator and this is gonna be edit object again. This edit object again has lots of options. It has add object, which is actually gonna be the one that we're gonna use, so that's great by default. I'm gonna connect the sensor to the actuator. Done. And the object I'm gonna be creating is Bob new. So if I select Bob new, as soon as this empty object receives a message with the subject spawn, it's gonna create a new instance of Bob new and it's gonna put it on the same layer and in the same location as the spawning target object, which is uh, this um, empty, okay? So I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm gonna press uh, P on my keyboard after I zoom a little bit. P, I'm gonna move uh, with the up arrow on my keyboard and we get a new spawn of our character, which I can control and I can die again. But wait a second, we didn't get a new spawn after my second character died. If I press escape on my keyboard and then press P again to play, the first character dies and I get a second spawn, but then my new version of the character, my new Bob, when he dies, he doesn't get a new spawn. Why is that? Well, that was a little mistake I made at the beginning of this video. Um, on my original character, my original Bob, I created a message that gets that happens whenever we collide with the red bad material. But I actually duplicated my original character before I did that. So if I go down to my new Bob character and select him, you'll notice that he doesn't shout out a message that says spawn when he dies. When he collides with red bad, he just ends, but he doesn't shout out a message that says spawn. So let's add a new actuator and it's gonna be a message actuator. Let's connect up the collision to that. So now we have he'll die, he'll end, and he's going to shout out a message with the same subject, with the same capitalization, spawn. So I think we're good to go. Let's go back to our main layer and I'll kind of reorient my camera angle and I'll press P to play. I'm going to use the up arrow to die and then I respawn and I can keep on respawning and I've got unlimited lives at this point. But that's how you make a character spawn. That'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.